I thought I would show you that I also like other types of music other than just clap music. <laughs> this is one of the music beds that YouTube let me use uh, for my video that is entitled From Beast to Beauty, The Full Restoration of a Singer Featherweight 221. This video is not about that featherweight. That featherweight is long gone. It's gone back to its owners and I'm sure that they're delighting in that beautiful little machine. We, I mean, we took it from, it was ragged, if you look at that video again, to just a spectacular uh, restoration piece. This video is revealing the secret that I had in the last one. The last one where I was showing the three machines on my workbench, the 201-2, the 1591, and then the small little machine on the end, which is the 99K. That's the machine that's going to go to Lizzie. And there she is. She is a beauty. She was born in 1958 on April 9th. I've got to look at my little cheat sheet down there. And this machine is even unique among the class of 99Ks because most 99Ks come with a 0.54 uh, amp motor. That was pretty standard out of the ones that were made in the U.S. and also the ones that were made in Great Britain like this one. But this one had a special touch on it. When it came to the motor, they ended up grabbing a motor from the Singer factory in Canada, and that was a 0.8 amp motor. So this has the same size motor as that Spartan that I compared it to in one of the previous videos. It's a spectacular machine, a lot of kick, and it's two times the strength of the Singer Featherweight. Two times the strength of the Singer Featherweight, this 99K. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can get a little bit of closer look at it. And then we're going to jump pretty much into the sew-offs. So we're going to be sewing off on everything from U.S. Army grade canvas, denim, and some full grain leather as well. I've got a lot of sew-offs that I could potentially do. We'll see how much time we have. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on Lizzie's machine, which is now revealed at last. And you'll see a closer glimpse of it here. Uh, she is just a beauty of a machine. And uh, as we kind of pan over here, you can see that U.S. Army grade canvas we're going to be sewing. You can see the denim, uh, multiple layers. Over here, you can get a closer look at some of that full grain leather that we're going to be sewing off. And I'll actually see if I can zoom in as I did in a previous one. Leather type, protected, full grain. There you can see it right there. So nothing lightweight at all about the sewing that we're going to be doing. I'm going to see if I can stay right about there as far as jumping right into some sew-offs. Turn my screen around so hopefully I can see what you see. And I'll warn you in advance, I do have my big boots on, so if we have any hesitation or anything like that, it's totally my fault. So we're going to start by sewing off on some of this U.S. Army grade canvas. Uh, I've got two layers right now, which is laughable for this machine. I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half, and you'll be able to see that we're up to four layers of this U.S. Army grade canvas. And watch what this little Mighty Might does when it comes to a task that would send some of the contemporary singers running and crying away, honestly. So here we go. This is four layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. I wanted to kind of throttle up and down a little bit just so you could see, you know what? We don't have to hammer that foot control, even with my clod hoppers, in order to, uh, to show you what this machine is capable of doing, honestly. Uh, that 0.8 amps, you know, quite honestly, even the 0.54 amps that come standard on most of these uh, machines is going to be more than enough to get the job done when it's properly restored. You can see right there in the camera, hopefully, I'm kind of angling it different ways. Look at that stitch quality. I'm going to go vertical on it as well. I'll try to go vertical. I know we're in kind of a tight shot right now. But you know what? I'll go at the end as well so you can see it. That is absolutely a spectacular uh, stitch quality. The formation, the spacing, everything about it, and the lock-in looks just as good. So let's jump over to some denim. Uh, I've got four layers of heavy grade denim. Nothing lightweight about this stuff at all. I'm going to go ahead and slide it underneath the presser foot, 
get my old clod hopper ready to push on the foot control and I'll show you what this can do with denim as well. Lizzie, I believe, is going to be sewing primarily leather, which I'm going to kind of capstone this video with, doing some full grain leather. But you know what? You never know when you're sewing. You might jump around. You might do some alterations for uh, a customer or for a family member. Bottom line is you got to be ready. So here goes four layers of heavy grade denim. And you know what? Get ready for easy, 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 easy when it comes to getting the job done. And I'm just going to make a slight adjustment on the upper tension for this denim. Here we go. Once I get my boot in place. Oh, i got to get different shoes. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Throttling it up and down is fun because if you have a machine that is properly restored, you don't need to go full throttle. It's fun to do it sometimes, though. You've seen me do it in videos. Okay, here's our four layers of denim. You know what? Ridiculous. I'm trying to see that little screen on the camera. Hopefully you can get a glimpse of it. I'm going to bring the light down even more so you can hopefully see uh, what I'm seeing. But that stitch quality, the formation, uh, everything about that stitch is absolutely spot on. I'm going to try to move my hand out of the way and again just kind of move it slowly in front of the shot so you can see it. Wow, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous stitch. Okay, so let's move on now to, I believe, what Lizzie's primary interest is. Let me bring this thread back here. Lizzie's primary interest is going to be in sewing leather. So let's do a couple of different leather samples. One is, I've got what I consider garment leather. It's not thin by any stretch of the imagination. It's genuine leather. You can see it there in the camera shot. I've got one, two, three, four layers of this stuff. So you know what? Again, put it under the uh, presser foot of a contemporary type uh, Singer sewing machine and I think you'd probably hear some plastic parts break. But you know what? When it comes to one of my machines that's fully restored, not even an effort. So I'm going to get that. It's a little bit slippery. I'm going to get that underneath the presser foot. And again, whenever you're sewing heavier grade, you always want to look at increasing your presser foot pressure a little bit. So I'm going to make, you can't see it, it's off camera. I'm going to make a slight adjustment, applying a little bit more pressure. And then we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this done. Again, let me just move that foot control. It kind of moved out of the way. There we go. Um, watch what it does with four layers of genuine cowhide leather. It's garment leather, not going to be full grain leather, but watch how easy this task gets done. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. How easy this machine makes it look. Okay, so I got to stretch it back a little bit. There's nothing lightweight about the motor on this machine. 0.8 amps, by the way, in case you didn't make the calculation yourself, is larger than the motor, the potted motor that's on the Singer 201 2, larger than the motor that is on the Singer 1591 that was also in that shot where I had the three machines recently on my workbench and I was still concealing the secret as far as which one was going to go to Lizzie. The motor on this little 99K is bigger than the Singer 201-2 that was in position 1 on my workbench, bigger than the Singer 1591 that was in position 2 on my workbench. And look at what it did with this four layers of garment leather. Full grain, I mean, it's, it's genuine leather. It's not full grain leather, but it's genuine leather. Those stitches are absolutely perfect, the spacing, the formation, and again, look at from the edge as to what we just went through. Nothing at all lightweight about that sew-off. Okay, so let's move on to some full grain leather now. This stuff is absolutely the thick of thick. Let me get it lined up here so you can see it. Okay. So from the side right here, take a look at where we're, what we're going to be going through. That's only three layers, but that is genuine full grain leather 
it is absolutely the thick of thick and this little machine is going to have its challenge in front of it. It's going to have a task at hand in trying to get through this stuff. So let's see what she does. Three layers of this stuff. Oh my gosh. I can just hear those Singer machines that are uh, at Walmart and some of the other retailers going, oh, don't do it, don't do it, you're going to kill yourself. And this Singer 99K with that 0.8 amp motor is just like, bring it on, buddy, bring it on. So let's see how this little Mighty Mike does with a task that is anything, anything but easy. Here we go. Now I was a good boy again. I throttled up and down, didn't give it full throttle, didn't give it max. And also off camera, you didn't see it, but I also reduced the stitch length a little bit so that I could even challenge this machine more. When you reduce the stitch length, we were right around seven to eight stitches per inch and you reduce the stitch length, you know what? You put even an added bourbon on that machine. Look at that stitch, oh my gosh. That is absolutely spectacular. And you know what? It drives it home so much that you have to kind of pull it back. I'm going to move this light in even more. You have to kind of pull it back so you can see just what an incredible job. And look at it again from the side. That's Here, it's easier to see from this side even probably. Three layers of this stuff. Turn it over here too on the end. Look at that. That is unbelievable as far as what we just went through. If I pinch that together, look at the thickness of that. You're talking probably 12 to 14 ounces of full grain leather. And this little 99K just went through it like it was nothing. And look at the lock-in. I had the material kind of facing the other way as well. So you can see the lock-in stitch, which is just as spectacular as the top stitch. Let me get my big old hands out of the way so you can see it. Look at that. Turn it over. Look at this one. You think that doesn't drive it home? Oh my gosh. 12 to 14 ounces of full grain leather and this little 99K just went brrrp, and I wasn't even close to full throttle with this machine. Can you believe that? That is nuts. So now, you know what? Let's wrap this video up. We've gone from canvas, U.S. Army canvas, we've done denim, we've done full grain leather, 12 to 14 ounces of it. We're going to wrap it up with some genuine cowhide now. Look at that stuff. You know what? That is nothing to be gawked at or to, to be, to be uh, considered an easy task, even for one of my machines. That's probably, again, 10 to 12 ounces of genuine cowhide leather. Let's see what this little Mighty Mike can do. And this is going to be our final sew-offs for this machine, our final confirmation sew-off before this machine gets packed up and heads towards the great state of Texas so that Lizzie can enjoy this machine uh, with her developing business. You know what? Watch what this machine does. And you know what? This time I might give it just a little bit more steam. Maybe not. Maybe I'll take it easy. Let's see what I decide to do. Here we go. I gave it a little bit more throttle that time once I actually got my big old boot on the foot control. <laughs> you know what? I probably should learn my lesson and change the type of, of uh, shoes that I wear when I'm doing these stitch-offs. But you know what? They're so comfortable. I just love them. Okay, now look at again from the side. Look at from the side what we just went through. That's the thickness of a man's belt. And this little 99K just went brrrp, once I got my foot on the foot control, that is. And look at the quality of that stitch. Oh my gosh. You know what, as a matter of fact, let me line this up. Get my light up here. Get my other light over here. And I'm going to line these stitch-offs that we just did up so you can hopefully see them and go, oh my gosh, I wish I had gotten more likes than Lizzie, and I wish that I 
had won that machine that Scott's going to be shipping off. I'm going to try to get them all lined up as best as I can. Again, we're talking about a three-quarter size machine, so I don't have a huge amount of space to work with. You know what I mean? All right, come on. Cooperate for me here. The, the subscribers are waiting to see this up close and personal, and you guys keep sliding away. Don't do that. All right, I'm going to put my clippers right on there, my snippers, so that I can try to hold that sucker in place. I may have to put more weight on it here. Oh, come on. Cooperate. There we go. Sort of. I better not bump my workbench or it's going to be all over the place. All right. So take a look at this up close. We're going to zoom in real close. Actually, we're pretty close already. Okay, so this is the last one we did right here. That's the genuine cowhide leather. All right. Let me try to move really slow here so that you can see, whoops, move real slow up those stitches so you can see, and look at from the edge, you can tell that that's, there, there's nothing easy about this at all. That is the thick of thick. Now we're going to go over to this garment leather where I actually reduce the size of the stitch, and look at that stitch quality. Holy mackerel, there's people that dream about having stitch quality like that. Now we're moving over to the denim. Look at that denim. You guys remember how many layers we just did? Holy cow. The formation, the spacing, that's absolutely ridiculous. Now we're moving over to the U.S. Army canvas. I love canvas. The way when you've got a properly serviced and restored machine, the way it presents that stitch quality all right, stop stop salivating, all of you out there. You could have won this, but you know what? You took a break. You didn't get enough likes, and Lizzie blew you guys out of the water. She had her troops rallied, and uh, amazing. I don't remember how many likes she got on that uh, on that contest, but it was a lot. I mean, it, it, it just blew the others right out of the water. So, Lizzie, this is the machine that's going to be leaving today or tomorrow heading towards you in Texas. The 99K, I believe the birth date again was 1958, is that right? Yeah, April 9th, 1958. It's, it's a spectacular machine, but what makes it even more spectacular again, it doesn't have that standard 0.54 amp motor. It's got a 0.8 amp motor out of Canada. So Lizzie, enjoy this machine. And subscribers, we're only about eight subscribers away from hitting 3,000. I'm not going to tell you when we're going to do our next machine giveaway, but when we hit 3,000 subscribers, I'm going to do another giveaway. So keep watch for that. And also the last little mini impromptu contest I did where, where the three machines were on my workbench, the 201, the 1591, and then this little 99K. Any of you that got pretty close to the answer, I did another post on that video and I said, hey, send me your address. I want to drop you something in the mail. So if you had a guess where it wasn't 201-2, but it was 201, close enough. If you guessed class 15 for that middle machine that was on my workbench, it was actually a 1591, close enough if you said 15. And if you guessed 99 instead of 99K, close enough. So again, take a moment to send me your contact information, and I'll drop something special in the mail to you if your answers were posted in the course of that contest running, that impromptu contest, okay? All right, stay tuned. Thanks so much for being a subscriber. And uh, I'm going to miss this little 99K. What a spectacular machine. But you know what? I know it's going into good hands with Lizzie in Texas. So enjoy, Lizzie. And thanks so much to all of you around the world for being a subscriber. God bless you guys.